Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how to hook up a Solus 3 phase or CSI KTL GS series inverter to Cashline's M504 gateway, as well as how to configure the inverter's slave address to match design requirements. Let's start by looking at how to connect inverters to the M504. To start, open up the wiring box at the bottom of the inverter and you should see something like this. To connect the M504, we will look at the RS485 terminal circled in red. This will be equipped with four terminal blocks labeled A in, B in, A out, and B out from left to right. Within the solar view enclosure, there is a document pouch attached to the inside of the door, which contains documents relevant to the specific site. Among these documents, there will be a single line drawing which displays the port that the inverters should be connected to on the COM board. In this case, it's port 1. I would advise that you hold on to this drawing since it will be useful later on in the video when we are setting slave addresses. To connect the first inverter, wire a twisted pair from the M504 485 COM module terminals T plus and D minus to the inverters A in and B in terminals. For all successive inverters, wire a twisted pair from the A out and B out terminal blocks of the inverter that is already connected to the A in and B in terminals of the inverter being added. The M504 gateway will use these connections to communicate with the inverters. To properly facilitate the communications, the inverters must have the correct baud rate, stop bit, and parity bit settings, as well as a distinct slave address for each separate inverter. For this device, baud rate is fixed to 9600, and communications are set to use one stop bit and no parity bit. These settings cannot be changed by the user. Now let's get back to the single line drawing that we used earlier. This drawing will display each inverter's slave ID and inverter number. This information can be found in the address assignment table or on the actual drawing. Once the inverters are connected, their slave addresses must be configured to match the M504's programming. Here we have the inverter's visual interface, which is equipped with three LEDs, one screen, and four buttons. The buttons are labeled Escape, Up, Down, and Enter from left to right. When the machine turns on, it displays a general overview screen. We want to enter the main menu, and we do this by pressing Enter. This is the main menu. From here we can navigate through to change settings or view information. To modify the inverted slave address, select Settings using the up and down buttons. And then, press Enter to continue. Once you're in the Settings submenu, select the Set Address tab, similarly using down and up, and press enter to get to the set address screen. From here we can change the inverter slave address to match how it is defined in the single line drawing. To do so, use the up and down buttons to choose the correct number between 1 and 99. For this inverter, the single line drawing specifies slave address 2. Press enter to submit the value. To make sure that the value is properly submitted, we can hit enter to go back to the set address screen. And from here we can see that the value is still 2. Now we can hit escape to exit without changing the value, and hit escape two more times to get back to the general overview screen.